It's time for another Friday Classic Hymn. And would you believe I've done 63 videos already on all these great old hymns. So if you love the old hymns or if you're trying to discover them, I really hope you'll go back and watch a bunch of those videos where I look at the history of the hymn and take a deep dive into the lyrics before singing it. Today, we are doing another one that I didn't know. You know, I'm getting to the point where people are saying, I can't believe you didn't know this one. This song, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, is one that everybody seems to know, but I've never sung this before in my life. I had to look it up on YouTube last week and start to get familiar with it, and I really love it. It's pretty deep. It's pretty hectic. The words are quite, quite formal and quite grandiose, but very powerful stuff. And so what about you? Do you know this one? I always ask you this, but if you have a story behind the song or a story of the song in your own life, shall I say, or a memory of singing it at a particular place, or if the song means something to you, please share that below in the comments. I love to read your stories and we're all richer for hearing your history of these hymns as well. And as always, friends, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, may I ask you to do that and like the video and maybe put a comment below. These things all help the, the channel to grow. And if YouTube sees a lot of engagement with the video, it throws the video out to more people, which I'd love to see these videos reach more people. So thank you for doing that. And let's get into the song as I tell you the history behind it first. The author of this hymn is Walter Chalmers Smith. Born in Aberdeen in Scotland, Smith was ordained into the Free Church of Scotland in 1850 at the age of 26. And he spent years as a minister in the Free Church and was well respected, rose up through the ranks and eventually became the moderator, which was the highest position in the church. He was a respected scholar and preacher, but he was a little bit on the liberal side not liberal in the way that we would understand the word today, but for his time, he apparently published a couple of things that were banned by his church because they were a little bit more liberal than the church was used to at the time. But he was still respected and loved as a minister of this church. Now, according to Frank Calcoon's book, Sing to the Lord, Smith wrote his hymns and, and said that he wrote his hymns as a retreat from his hard labors. But his hymns weren't altogether too famous or well-received. This is the only one that seemed to get anywhere, and it lives on today because it's so, it's so well-loved for the depth that it portrays in the words. But the song lives on in popularity, especially in England. Queen Elizabeth actually chose this as one of the hymns to be played at the service that was given at her 60th birthday at Windsor Castle. I was speaking to a friend yesterday, telling him that I was going to do the song, and he said, oh, we sang this song often at school, and we all knew this one. By the end of the year, we were belting it out. And so here it is, all these years later, and the song of Smith's still has a place in our lives. Let's take a look at the words that he wrote. First one begins with the words, Immortal, invisible, God only wise. And that is a paraphrase, a slight paraphrase of 1 Timothy 1 verse 17, which says, Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. So he just flipped some of those words around so that his rhyme would work, but it's directly out of Scripture. God, who is immortal, unlike we who are created and will die in the flesh, he's invisible, as Paul said in that verse, because he's not seen in our world, in his person. Of course, we see his fingerprints everywhere. We see signs of him. And of course, in Jesus, we saw him in person. But he's not visible as he might be. But of course, we know that the sky declares the glory of God and creation declares the glory of God. And there are so many ways in which we can see him. God only wise, only wise God. And so none is as wise as him. Solomon, in all his wisdom, is not nearly as wise as God himself. And of course, Paul was writing in a time where there were lots of false gods in the religions of the people around him. And so maybe this was him saying, well, this is the only God who has any wisdom. He's the only real God, the one true God, and he alone is wise. Now, in the second line, we see a theme that repeats all throughout this hymn. 
which is the theme of light. In light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes. And so God is so light that he's hidden from our eyes, inaccessible, because his light in, in all its splendor would actually blind us. Sort of like the sun, you can't look directly at the sun, but it lights everything up. And so God is kind of shielded from us, but it is his light that makes everything what it is. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days. And of course that phrase comes from Daniel, where Daniel sees one like the Son of Man, Jesus, going on the clouds to the ancient of days, to God the Father. And so that's just a picture of God in his glory, in his splendor. Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Lovely verse about the grand splendor of God and why we worship him, because he is so great. Verse 2, unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting nor wasting, thou rulest in might. What a good bunch of words there, unresting, unhasting. So he's, he's not sitting around doing nothing. He's at work, but he's not in haste. He's not running himself ragged. He is perfectly at rest as he works. That's an amazing thing about God. And silent as light. So there again is the word light. Silent. But again, he speaks, doesn't he? He speaks in many ways, but it's not as if he's booming all the time. He is quiet and gentle but still present, nor wanting, nor wasting. Again, lovely little contrast there. It doesn't need anything, it doesn't waste anything, unlike humans, right? He rules in might. He rules over the world in might, in power. Thy justice like mountains, high soaring above. Thy clouds, which are fountains of goodness and love. And so God is both justice like mountains, soaring justice. His justice is, is perfect and huge and, and present. He's a just God, but he is also full of goodness and love. Fountains of goodness and love. The clouds in the sky are pictures of his fountains of goodness and love. This is a great picture of God, and we perhaps don't sing of his justice enough anymore. Maybe you would disagree, but I think we need to have both his justice and his love in our hymns. Verse 3. To all life thou givest, to both great and small. In all life thou livest, the true life of all. Oh, that's beautifully put. God gives life to all great and small, and he lives and gives life. In other words, true life is God living within all. And so God living within someone gives them true life, not just the ability to breathe, but a quality of life. Remember, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life in abundance, life to the full, other translations say. And so he's the one who gives life, but then gives us the great quality of life that only he can give. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree. That's a common picture in scripture of people of God flourishing like trees. If you look at Psalm 1, it's a great example of the person of God is like a tree planted by streams of water that flourishes, that gives forth its fruit in season. And so those who have God living within them flourish and blossom. But the last line says that we also wither and perish, which is true. Though we flourish spiritually and blossom, of course our lives come to an end physically. But God himself doesn't die. Nothing changes him. Even though we go through our seasons, God is the same the whole time. Lovely words to sing. Verse 4 and 5 are normally mixed. So in most hymnals today, you'll find a mix of verse 4 and 5. But I want to show you them both in their fullness here. Verse 4 says, Great Father of glory, pure Father of light. Once again, light. A theme that he loved, obviously. He's the father of glory, so he is worthy of praise and wonderful and amazing. And he's the pure father of light. And so we see this picture of his, his perfection and his wonder over there. Thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. The angels worshipping but veiling their sight because his glory would probably be too great to look directly upon. 
of all thy rich graces. This grace, Lord, impart. Take the veil from our faces, the vial from our hearts. Oh, beautiful. So he says, you've got so many graces to give, Lord, but impart this grace, we pray. Take the veil from our faces. So he's talking about it, wanting to see more of God's glory. The Bible talks about how we, we are all, we've got this veil over our eyes until he lifts the veil. And once the veil is lifted, we can see his glory. And, and that's a picture of salvation, is God lifting the veil from our eyes. And so he's asking here, lift the veil from our eyes and the vial from our heart. And so lift the sins off of us. Another pr- picture of what happens in salvation is God removes the vial and the sinful things from our hearts, makes us new. We become born again and new creatures. What a beautiful, beautiful verse. And then the last verse, verse 5, All Lord, we would render, or we don't use that word anymore, but it means praise. All Lord, we would render, oh, help us to see. Tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. Again, that theme of the light of God which hides him. He's so bright that the light shines, but we, we can hardly even look at it. And so we want to praise him, he says. But he, he says, oh, Lord, help us to see. We want to see more of you. And so let thy glory, almighty, impart through Christ in his story, thy Christ to the heart. Love that line. So, Lord, since we can't look on you directly because your light is so bright, let the Christ story, let us look at Jesus and in his story, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, his coming again in judgment and glory. Let it all impart Christ into our hearts and let us have a a stronger view and understanding of your glory through Jesus. That is a wonderful hymn. What a wonderful hymn. What words have stood out for you today? Was something there really meaningful for you in one of these verses? Please share that below. And maybe we should sing this more. I'm trying to think if this would work at our church if we had to sing it, if people would know it. It might be worth doing because it's powerful stuff. We're going to sing it together now. Before we do, just a big thank you to those who donate towards my ministry. Many of you have been so kind in giving me a donation on PayPal or subscribing to my Patreon where I send out my extra daily devotions and all of that. And so thank you for those who are able to do that. It really keeps me going. But please remember this is always free and I hope that you will share it and just enjoy these songs week after week. Come, let's sing the song together and may it be that our our hearts soar as we praise God using these great words. Immortal, invisible God, only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancients of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasty, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains, high soaring above, thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small, in all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish, as leaves on the tree and wither and perish 
but not change Great Father of glory, pure Father of light, thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. Of all thy rich graces, this grace, Lord, impart. Take the veil from our faces, the vile from our hearts. O oh Lord, we would render, O oh, help us to see, tis only a splendor of light hideth thee, and so let thy glory Almighty imparts through Christ in his story thy Christ to. Me.